the kids are back. I said I'd stop. My roots spread out to the waters. We get time, look at Jeremiah 17, 8. With the dew all night on my branches, we get home, look at Hosea 14, 5. My glory fresh with me and my bow ever new in my mind. Look at 1 Peter 4, 12. I'm going to end on this note. Job said it's not going to end. Job said he's going to live a short life. He's not going to live a long time based on what was going on in his life at the present time. Life is over as I know it. And I'm going to die with a bad name. I'm going to die without friends. I'm going to die without success. I'm going to die without leaving an inheritance to my children. I'm not even going to have any children to leave an inheritance to. I'm going to die sick in my body. Some of the dreams I had, they will never be fulfilled. And I guess I'll never see God. What a pessimistic viewpoint. I guess Job said, tonight is the night. Y'all, I'm ready to go home. But the funny thing about the story, that's not how it is. When you go over there to Job 42, God gave him double everything he lost. God gave him double the children. God gave him double the assets. God increased his household. God doubly blessed his name. Because now here's a man who's gone through the fire and come out of the fight. So God has really elevated his name and his prestige in his community. He has a healthy relationship with his wife. And what about those old three no good friends? God said, now I'm going to whoop you real good. He said, but if you don't want me to whoop you real good, go ask Job to tell me to forgive you. <laughs> he said, go ask Job if you want me to forgive you. So those three no good friends had to go to Job and say, Job, please, 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 we sorry. We said the wrong things about you. And Job said, paraphrasing, hey, it's all right. I've already made peace with God. You're good. And so God showed the power of Job in his life. Now, in some verses over there, when it says that he thought his days would be like the sand, in some translation, it says he thought his days would be like the phoenix. And I don't know how much you know about the term phoenix, but in Greek mythology, the phoenix was this majestic of all birds. The phoenix was something like a great bald eagle with purple colors and bright red colors and maybe kind of like a peacock kind of flavor going on through his body. But he has the strength and, and power of that great evil. And so the story of this particular phoenix is that he's from Job's hometown. He's from Arabia. And so this particular phoenix, the Greek mythology story goes, that this phoenix was a bird like none other bird. This phoenix could fly super duper high. This phoenix could piss the air. The story goes on that this tremendously powerful of all birds would live 500 years. And that when this bird of a phoenix, and this is how Job once believed, when this bird of a phoenix would become sick in its body. When this bird of a phoenix would become weak in its knees and an old age would catch up to him. The old phoenix would die, see? The old phoenix, Curtis, would <clears throat> take some myrrh and some other aromatics and it would build a, a nest. And it would build a nest during that time and they believed in the sun god. And so the theology of the Greeks would go that this bird would build a nest on top of rays place. And then the sun rays would pierce this particular nest. This is how Job believed. It would pierce that particular nest. And that particular nest would just kind of catch on fire. That particular bird that was now 500 years old 
has seen many a war in life and time. That that bird through that fiery furnace, through that fiery fire, would reimagine himself. And that that bird would go into something that would consume most people. But that bird would come out anew. And so they said that when one bird's life would end, that bird would reimagine himself into a new bird. And that bird would come out strong and healthy. And that bird would live another 500 years. And at the end of that 500 years, the cycle would repeat itself. And so this phoenix would never, never die. And so Job once had that mindset. There's another phoenix that the Bible talks about. And this particular individual came from a great place. And he clothed himself in the likeness of you and I. And this great bird began to walk and fly amongst the earth. And this great bird that did no wrong, this great bird of a man, went upon a great nest of Calvary's cross. All right. And this great bird endured a tremendous fire, mm -hmm. the fire of God's anger, the fire of God's frustration, the fire of God's punishment, the fire of God's unhappiness. And why would this bird do this? Why would this bird allow himself to be consumed? Why would this bird die upon a cross, be buried in a tomb? Why would this bird who could live forever choose to die so that another bird of you and I might live again? All right. And so the story goes that Jesus died on Calvary's cross. They put him in a bar grave and stayed in that grave for a period of three days. And at the end of three days, that bird flew out of the nest. They went back to the cage of the tomb, and that particular bird was not that. But what does the cross have to do with you today? When you take Christ and you allow him to enter the cross on your behalf, when you allow Christ to take all of your wrongdoings and all of your sins and all the stuff you knew you shouldn't do, I'm talking about stuff you did just a few minutes ago. <laughs> stuff you did last night. I ain't talking about stuff from last week. That stuff. When you allow him to be crucified, when you allow him to take the brunt of the punishment that God has for you for those type of things, then you are able to participate in the resurrection moment of God in your life. When God says, I forgive you, Martin. I forgive you, Curtis. Derek, I forgive you. Lee, I forgive you. Jacamey, I forgive you. Brandon, he says, don't even worry about it, man. You good with me. Mary, I know what you did, but I forgot about it. How about that? Jason, you good. Don't even, let's not even talk about it anymore. And then he goes right back through the conversation. He says, and I see the, the beautiful colors of righteousness upon you. The beautiful colors of grace upon you. The beautiful colors of righteousness upon you. The beautiful colors of faithfulness upon you. And so now when I talk to you and when I consider you, I consider you not based on what I forgot, but based on what I see right now. Mm -hmm. And what I see is the clothes of righteousness upon you. And that's why Job lives. That's how Job made it through that. Because God did not look at Job today. God saw the righteousness of Job. And I want you to know God sees the righteousness of you. And that's why what's going on today is just for now. Because the righteousness will call the new place for you in your life. God is doing something in your life. I want you to believe it, Derek. He got something for you, buddy. Yeah, he, he, man, he put you at the top, brother. He got something. I want you to believe it, man. Believe that, man. We're going to end on Derek. I want Derek to believe it. Man, God got something so special. But I can't even communicate. I'm trying, but I can't. It's so special. It might blow my mind. I might not believe it. But I sure hope you believe it. Believe what God has for you. Father God, we thank you so much for these people. We thank you for another day of coming and 
sharing about the life of Job and, and, and seeing the importance of having the right thoughts in our mind and seeing the importance of watching our eye gate and watching our ear gate. We thank you for teaching us the importance of making sure certain people are not around us so that they can't affect us. Father God, we're seeing that what happens today is just for now. And we understand that there's a greater blessing you have for us on tomorrow. Now, Lord, on behalf of everybody in here in faith, we say bring on tomorrow. Yes, we say thank you for tomorrow. Amen. We say we know weeping endured for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Yes, Lord, it's in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for these, all your people. And somebody said, Amen. 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 If you do not have a church home and you're looking for a church home, I ask that you join City of Faith Church. It, it, it's a simple process. If you're shy or you don't feel like coming up, you don't have to come up. There's some paperwork on your table. If you fill out this paperwork, I take it as your voice. Only thing you have to do is check the box. I would like to join City of Faith Church. I would like to become a member of the leadership team. You fill out that information, put your name on it, and I'm going to pray for you, and you become a member of this church. And I'm going to take spiritual responsibility for you. And I'm going to believe that the blessing that God has over this ministry, that blessing is going to run over in your life. So if you don't have a church home, I ask you that you join today. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what a great moment. What a great opportunity to accept him as your Lord and Savior. What a great opportunity to say, you know what? I'm going to be a God man for the rest of my life. I'm giving Jesus my life. I'm going to allow Jesus to rule my life. I'm a Proverbs 31 woman. But to do this, I need God ruling in my life. So we give you the opportunity to do that. If you have made a financial gift earlier and you have not dropped it in the box, this is a great opportunity to fill it out, complete it. Come up here and drop it in this wonderful box. I give you a moment to kind of make your decision.